Hey friends, welcome back to Bell's Library. Today I want to share with you guys something that I have been talking about and excited about for a few weeks now, and that is the Nathanuary Challenge that is coming up in January 2024. In this challenge, we will be reading at least one work by Nathaniel Hawthorne, whether it be something fiction, nonfiction, a short story, something by Nathaniel Hawthorne, who was an American writer who lived in the 19th century. He is my favorite male author. Um, I like him better than Charles Dickens. I like him better than anybody I've read, but I hardly hear anyone talking about him. So I would like to introduce you to this favorite of mine, Nathaniel Hawthorne, those of you who will be new to his writings, and reintroduce those who have maybe read something in the past and would like to maybe get to know him better. So the most famous work you guys have probably all heard of by Nathaniel Hawthorne is The Scarlet Letter. Um, it tells the story of Hester Prynne. She has to wear a scarlet letter on her chest because she committed adultery. She had a child out of wedlock. And the whole story just talks about the redemption and forgiveness that she goes through um, even though her community does not. Um, on the flip side, it talks about the struggle and just the um, eating up of the soul of the man who, you know, is the father of that baby um, and everything that he goes through and how his unforgiveness of himself and his unwillingness to bring this, you know, sin into light, uh, it really eats away at him. And as her life gets better and brighter, his gets more dark and depressing. And it all has to do with that internal struggle that they were going through, along with their struggle with God. Hawthorne's books are such an interesting interpretation of the time of the Puritans. That's not all he wrote about, but that's a lot of what he wrote about. European settlers to America during the time of the Puritans um, and all that they kind of went through to establish the society. I always come away with a lot of heart humbling ideas to mull over. Something I find over and over again in Nathaniel's writing is kind of this reoccurring struggle between two uh, former groups of Englishmen, the Puritans and then those who were not uh, religious like they were, but they came here to settle for other reasons. <laughs> I enjoy reading these stories because I really appreciate how well he points out the irony of the hypocrisy of a religious person. Now I am a believer, I'm a Bible believing person, um, but a religious person takes on sort of this pious kind of self-righteous spirit about them um, where they see themselves as just a little or a lot higher than the rest of society. And Hawthorne addresses that repeatedly in some very interesting and often sort of gothic-y, kind of moody stories that he tells. My favorite book that I've read from Nathaniel Hawthorne is actually this anthology of many of his tales. A lot of his tales about New England are in here, and it is heavily annotated by me throughout the years. I love this book of stories. I first discovered Nathaniel Hawthorne about 15 years ago when I was taking some college classes. And since then, I have eaten it up. He is one of those guys that I read in the fall when we're getting into that season where we're feeling very atmospheric and we're ready to sort of buckle down in and just uh, dig into our favorite reads, right? The things that just make us feel cozy and bring on that sort of... I don't know, familiar thing, you know what I'm talking about, that we feel when fall comes. He's one of those reads for me. Um, I love reading his stories that are set in New England. During the Puritan times, they have that sort of, I don't know, dark and moody atmosphere that we're all looking for when we are looking for those autumnal reads. Now, Nathaniel Hawthorne had some Puritans within his family line. In fact, I think it's his grandfather or great-grandfather who presided over some of the Salem witch trials, and he put some people to their deaths during that time. And I've always felt like he sort of carried a little bit of that guilt um, of having his family history have been a part of all of that. He's really good at pointing out those things within a religious person that makes other people want to shun religious people. And so it is uh, very convicting for me, who is trying to shine a light <laughs> and of goodness into the world and make the world a better place, right? Be someone who's interesting and fun to be around. Uh, he points out how many religious people can take on this yucky spirit that makes them not fun to be around. Hawthorne really gets people and he's able to show us our faults without being preachy about it because you can tell he knows these faults are his own as well. Within the last couple of years, I've read his book called The Blythedale Romance and that one takes place a little bit later in history. It's not during the Puritan times. 
It's actually the story about some people who do sort of this experimental commune, and he was one of them, um, along with Louisa May Alcott's father and some other people. Um, and so he writes a fictional story, but uh, many of his own experiences are interwoven into the story, and he makes a lot of comments about the value of women very countercultural ideas about aptitudes and abilities that women possess that many in his time were not talking about. He really does seem to be someone who was sort of living outside of time, maybe the Tesla of historical writing. If you enjoy historical fiction, if you're trying to cross some classics off of your list, some of these even being on that 1001 books to read before you die list, uh, if you're interested in any of this at all, join the Nathanuary Reading Challenge here at Bell's Library, all you gotta do to participate is to read one book by Nathaniel Hawthorne, whether it's a full-length novel or even just a short story. You can even probably find some of these online at various sites that either give an audio version or a PDF version of some of these classic stories. Some of my favorites include Young Goodman Brown, Wakefield, The Maypole of Marymount, Roger Malvin's Burial, my Kinsman, Major Molyneux, The Gentle Boy, The Ambitious Guest, Rappuccini's Daughter. He's got so many good ones. So I would love for you to enjoy this challenge if you're interested. You can leave a comment in the comment section letting me know that you are joining. You can share this video or your own videos or blog post links, Goodreads links, whatever media in which you use to talk about your book reading. Share that using the hashtag that I'm displaying here. I will also be putting a blog post up on my blog, bellslibrary.com, so you can go over there and let us know that you are participating. And then on the sidebar of my blog, bellslibrary.com, I will be putting up a list of all the participants who have left me some kind of a link to be able to go and see um, what you're doing. So like I said, whether you have a blog, a Goodreads, um, Storygraph, wherever you put your stuff up publicly, leave a link somewhere for me so that I can add you to that list if you'd like to be on that blog roll so other people can come and visit and see what you are reading uh, now, later, and during the Nathaniary challenge. One of the books that I have chosen to read during that challenge is called The House of Seven Gables. This is a book I have not yet read by him. Um, I've just, I've had it forever. I don't even know where I got it, but um, I've had it forever and just have not got a chance yet to read this. So I don't know. I want it to be like a gothic mystery because I love gothic mysteries. I think he does that vibe really good. Um, but I actually have absolutely no idea what this book is about. So if you guys have read this, let me know, but don't leave me any spoilers. And then throughout the next few weeks, I will share reviews on the stories and books of his that I have read that I've really enjoyed. Talk a little bit deeper about him, what he wrote about, what some of his stories are about. I'd like to do a video just on the Scarlet Letter itself because I think there is so much deep awesomeness to be found within that story um, at all stages of life. So I'm looking forward to Nathanuary 2024. I hope you are as well. I hope this will be a fun challenge for all of us. Take care, guys. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.